This is the E-beam. It is used to deposit metal or even silicon dioxide onto your substrate. What it does is it uses an electric gun to heat your uh, sample material and that will evaporate onto your substrate and your sample up here. So before you can use the machine, you need to be trained and qualified. And once you get those two things accomplished, you'll get an account to log in. So when you come to the system, you want to make sure nobody else is using it, the system's not down, and then what, those are all fine, then you come in and log in. Once you've logged into the system, you want to write into the logbook. So in the logbook, you would write your name, the time you're using it, the material you're depositing, the base pressure, and then once you log in, you are ready to start uh, loading your sample on a substrate. This is the phase of loading your samples into the E-beam. There are two types of substrate holders. This one is for whole wafers, while there's another one over here where we can put smaller or pieces of wafers as well. And you, you can actually mount the whole wafers there as well. So if you look at this sample holder, we, we put the wafer on here, and then we're going to clip it onto here. Because actually this whole thing is inverted in the machine, so you don't want it to fall, the sample to fall. I use clips, but you can also use the thermal Kapton tape. So once you've uh, mounted your wafer and you want to put it in the system, you would need to vent the system, because right now it's in high vacuum. So what we're going to do is now we're going to vent the system. So now that we mean venting the system and the pressure has reached 7.4, to 10 to the plus 2 at ATM, we can actually open the chamber. So to do that, we would turn the vent off and raise the, cham raise the chamber with the toggle valves. We push it back because there's two pins right here. Right here is a pin. So you know how far back to push it. So once we have our sample and substrate loaded up here, we want to actually load in a crucible that con contains the metal that we want to evaporate. So this system actually has four pockets that you can, you can put this in. So to put it in the right pocket, we would need to first use gold as a reference. And we want to, since we're doing titanium, we want to be one before gold. So we have gold, we look for gold, and then we rotate the system with this knob here. And we can see the open crucible for titanium, and that's where we put it in. So we'll do that now. We'll open the shutter so we can see our samples. So we can turn this till we find gold. So if we look inside, so we can keep turning it and gold is right there. So we know that it's one after the gold. So we know this is the slot for titanium. So we put it in here. We make sure it's in. And then we close our shutter. It's also good to look at these two mirrors. So these mirrors help you look at your crucible while you're depositing. This mirror lets you see your crucible when the shutter is closed. And then this mirror lets you see the shutter, the crucible when the shutter is open. So you put your head about this height and to make sure you can see the mirror there when the shutter is open. And then the mirror there of your sample of the crucible when the shutter is closed. So I can see the crucible there when it's closed and I can see the crucible there when it's open. So my mirrors are in the right position. So now that the sample is closed, and the substrate is there, and the shutter is closed, our mirror is in the right position, and we have a sample up here mounted securely, we can bring this chamber down and put it back into high vacuum. So we're going to do that now, is we're going to lower the chamber. So now that we've closed the chamber, and our samples are in there, and our crucible is there, and the shutter is closed, we can begin the pump down process. So right now the system is in 
atmosphere, normal atmosphere. So we want to bring it down to the high vacuum. But we, we can't just jump there, so we need to rough it with a mechanical pump. So the first thing we're going to do is turn the mechanical pump on, which is called a roughing. So there's a roughing valve here. And we just turn it on. Make sure the high vac and the vent is off. So we turn the roughing on. And you should see the pressure decrease. So we want to do make this to make sure that the pressure is less than 7 times 10 to the minus 2 before we turn the high vac on. But you can go a little even lower than that. So we'll wait a little bit for the pressure to drop. So after the roughing, valve, roughing pump has brought the pressure down to below 50 millitor, we can switch the mechanical pump off for the roughing and turn on the high vac. So what we do is we look at the pressure, it's under 50 millitor. And now we're going to turn the rough off. And once we turn it off, we wait a little bit for the actuation of the medical valve to make sure it's closed. And then we're going to turn the high vac on. So when we turn the high vac on, after we turn this on, we should see the pressure drop. So let's turn the high vac on. And you can see the pressure drop fast. If the pressure does not drop, there might be a problem with the cryo, or cryo pump. It might have been dumped. To verify that, we would look at the cryo pump, which is located behind the system. And we want to make sure there's no moisture on top of the pump. If there is moisture, that means the cryo pump has been dumped and we want to ab abort the process. So to abort the process, we would make sure we would turn the high vac off and then go to the chase and t turn the, the compressor off. In case the cryo pump has been dumped, you want to make sure you turn the compressor off. The compressor is found in this chase's room, 2337. And before you go on, you want to make sure there's no odors or chemical spills. If there is, then you will notify staff. But it looks like it's fine to go in. So we're going to go in and turn off the compressor. So this is the compressor for the E-Beam 1 cryo pump. So it's labeled E-Beam 1. So it's this bottom one. And if the cryo pump is dumped, you need to turn the switch off. So the switch is located here. And you would turn this off if the cryo pump is dumped. After it's turned off, then you notify staff and let them know that the system has been dumped. So we're going to wait till the high vac goes in the negative 4 range. And when, the, when it goes in the negative 4 range, we're going to turn the iron gauge on. So we'll just wait for the high vac to pump down. Once the pressure of the thermocouple is, has reached its maximum scale, so we can't go any lower, we turn the iron gauge on, which is actually measuring the true pressure, because this is meant for low pressure measurements. So we turned it on, we can see the pressure is 6.8 to 10 to the minus 5. So we watch the system, and we can make sure that it's in high vacuum. And if, well, if it is, now we can leave the clean room and come back after about two hours, and then get ready to deposit.